Let me read to you a passage from the 8th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 19 to 21. It's the Gospel for the Solemnity of Our Lady Help of Christians, which is celebrated on May the 24th. St. Luke writes, It happened that Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, Your mother and brothers are standing outside, wanting to see you. He replied, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. That's from Luke chapter 8 verses 19 to 21 for the Feast of Our Lady Help of Christians on May the 24th. What does it suggest to us? Well, of course it suggests that Mary is our help. What do I mean? Well, if one were to ask to nominate the most famous Catholic thinker in English history, the name of John Henry Newman would be among those who would immediately come to mind. His intellectual and religious formation was Anglican, and as an Anglican, he worked his way to the Catholic Church. From being the most famous Anglican theologian in England, he became the most famous, the country's most famous Catholic theologian, although he is probably best described not strictly, strictly as a theologian, but as a seminal religious thinker. One of his most notable books was his last as an Anglican, in which he answered one of his own most persistent objections to the teaching of the Catholic Church. As an Anglican, he objected to the apparent innovations to pristine Christian doctrine which the Church of Rome had gradually introduced over the centuries. These innovations amounted to corruptions of revealed religion, he had thought, and an instance of this was the invocation of the saints, especially the invocation of the Virgin Mary. There was almost nothing of this in the New Testament, he thought, and yet it was rampant in Catholic teaching. His formal answer to the change in doctrine over the centuries is contained in his epochal book, his great book, published in 1845, The Development of Christian Doctrine. The innovations are not corruptions, but developments that represent the Church's advancing understanding of divine revelation. Having established this general idea, he offers several tests of a true development. Newman's idea is an hypothesis, a philosophical theory about doctrine that has stood the test of time and is accepted now as assuredly true. Over the course of the centuries, the Church comes to an explicit awareness of what it knows implicitly. It is in this light that the copious teaching of the Church on the Mother of Christ and the power of her intercession is to be understood. In our Gospel today that I read earlier, Mary, the Mother of Jesus, is referred to. She is among the relatives of Jesus and a message comes to him asking that she and his family his family circle, wished to see him. Our Lord uses the occasion to explain who are his real family. As we heard, someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. The Catholic will see in these words a description of Christ's mother. She is the one par excellence who heard the word of God and put it into practice. She is mother to Christ according to Christ's own criteria, as given in this passage of Luke's Gospel, in which Gospel much of what we know about Our Lady is to be found. I am referring especially to the infancy narratives of that Gospel. The angel addressed her as the one who was full of grace. She accepted the word of God as it came from him and immediately gave to it her entire obedience, be it done unto me according to your word. 
the power of her intercession is seen in the Gospel of St. John when at her word our Lord worked his first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana and thus launched his public ministry. From the cross he gave his mother to his beloved disciple to be his mother too and to dwell with and to dwell with him. The Christian sees in this a gift to all of us. Since the early centuries the church's love for and confidence in the mother of Christ has constantly deepened and so it is that Mary the mother of Christ is understood by all the faithful as being the help of Christians. She is Christ's gift to us to be our mother and our model. At special times in the church's history, times of unusual threat, the church has invoked the intercession of Mary help of Christians. Not only does this apply to threats on the individual believer, but threats on nations and civilizations. One of the greatest instances of this was the threat to European and Christian civilization posed by the Islamic advance during the 16th century, a century riven by Christian division and strife, for it was the era of the Protestant Reformation. Prior to and during the encounter with the Islamic forces at Lepanto, a vast chorus of prayer ascended to heaven, calling on the intercession of Mary help of Christians. The Turks were defeated. The point is that the intercession of Mary in heaven is immensely powerful. How could her son refuse her requests? Let us look on Mary, the mother of Christ, as the unfailing help of Christians and as their mother and their model. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. She is full of grace. The Lord is with her. Blessed is she among all women, and blessed is the fruit of her womb, Jesus. Let us hear again the words of Christ. Behold your mother, and let us take her to our home, the home of our hearts.